Hi, this is Bobby Edwards from Bridgehead Software. You are viewing part three of my seven part series on disaster recovery for cache based EMRs for hospitals. In this part, I'm going to cover Bridgehead Data Protection Suite for cache databases. I hope you find this valuable and I would appreciate your feedback. So please send it to our Twitter handle at BridgeheadHDM. Our website is www.bridgeheadsoftware.com. And again, this is the Bridgehead Data Protection Suite for cache databases. So the Bridgehead Data Protection Suite for cache databases includes two agents um, and they're supporting two alternative backup modes. The first is the cache online. This is typically for smaller environments. And the other is the Bridgehead Blast for cache for larger environments. And this is the one typically used with Epic. Both agents are built on the Bridgehead Healthcare Data Management Platform. It provides integrated backup and recovery of EMR application data stored in the cache databases. It works in concert with other Bridgehead components and they're all managed through a single console with consolidated storage and tape devices. So the Bridgehead agent for the cache online backup, relatively straightforward process. We're going to use our backup agent and that's going to um, begin the process by issuing a pre-process, which is a quies, which is the cache freeze command that's provided by this. It's also going to prepare any synchronization that may need to happen. At that point, the system is going to be uh, quiesced and ready for backup. The backup is then going to be read from the disk through the backup node into the appropriate fuller incremental backup device. Upon completion of this backup, post-processing is going to occur. We're going to clear the disk and at the same time we're going to thaw the cache database. This is going to allow the system to bring the system down as long as necessary and then return it as soon as it's there. There is a standardized timeout that you may need to change uh, depending on the size of the backup. So the next agent that we manage here is the BLAST agent for cache databases and how this alters is that uh, BLAST stands for Backups Leveraging Advanced SAN Technology. So very similar in process to the cache online, however, a little more involved. So the production server is going to be running, it's going to have a, an agent running on that that the control node will communicate with to indicate it's time to perform the backup. At this point, pre-processing is going to come into place where we're going to freeze cache using the epic scripts that they've defined. We're then going to, based on the particular SAN model and vendor that's used, issue the appropriate clone or snap request to create a point in time copy. Once that point in time copy is completed, we thaw the cache database and it is now free to go back to town. At this stage again, we're then going to communicate with the SAN to split that disk or capture that SNAP technology so that we can then back up the database from that SAN using the backup server. A common name for this also could be gateway, might be gateway node. And this is what's actually going to create the backup from the point in time copy. This is going to release that production uh, disk so that the live environment is now back up and operational. So this is going to allow us to access that point in time copy. We'll then mount that on the appropriate devices and then back up from that point going forward. The devices that we can back up here again are, you know, virtually any target can be selected, whether it's a tape based or disc based target, doesn't matter. The end of this process, again, is to, on the complete end, the post-processing, is to make sure that everything's cleaned up. Now, what's unique about this method is it allows us to selectively determine, based on each site, whether or not it makes sense to unmount the clones after the backup has finished or to potentially leave them mounted in a read-only state for the daily recovery tasks that are typically performed within this environment. 
So leaving the mounted button read only, they still allow the user very fast access to data without having to recover for routine tasks that they may do throughout the day. So why would you want the BLAST backup for cache databases as opposed to the online version of this? Well, quite frankly, it's faster as compared to the cache online. It allows for more frequent point in times of data capture, and these can be very applicable, especially when we're looking at some of the journal files, the database objects, the cache.dat files, as well as the entire database. This has very little, if any, impact to the EMR application from backup processing. The backup processing is all done separate on disk that is not tied to the EMR. So we're not going to impact performance in that sense. The other thing is going to assure an application consistent data backup, which is uh, better than a crash consistent backup. This is going to ensure that the data is application ready as opposed to having to restore the data and come back up through and maybe not in a good state with the crash consistent. So the other alternative, the other elements here, it allows us an immediate recovery capability it, using the local disk mirrors. So again, routine, routine recovery jobs that may be occurring throughout the day or for reporting, uh, for certain reporting things that may be looking people may be looking at during the day, this allows these individual elements to be requ requested and retrieved from this offline disk very quickly. It gives us options for managing protection at both local and remote locations, leveraging the cache's own protection methods. And it, it's an engineered supported backup as opposed to a parts and pieces backup, which is going to give us a standardized recovery product solution. That concludes part three of my seven part series on disaster recovery for cache based EMRs for hospitals. In the next part, I'm going to cover production database recovery. I hope you found this session valuable. I also encourage you to follow Bridgehead on Twitter for notification on future presentations at BridgeheadHDM. Our website, www.bridgeheadsoftware.com.